All right, it's Barry, and today on Grow It, I've got everything that you need to know about using mycorrhizae to give your plants a super nutrient boost. There's tons of different soil additive products that boast beneficial effects for your plants, but they don't usually go as far as telling you exactly what happens when you add them to your soil or how you should care for your soil after their application. So what better time to get into the world of plant, fungal and bacterial symbiosis than at the start of the tomato and pepper growing season, as for reasons that I'll go into later on, these plants really do benefit from mycorrhizal interactions. To break it down and simplify it a bit, a mycorrhiza is basically a symbiotic relationship between a plant and a fungus and that's where the name comes from you've got myco which is relating to a fungus and rhizal which is to do with the roots stick them together and you have mycorrhizae or root fungus and while we're looking at the basics, you might have come across the term symbiosis before, but if not, symbiosis is essentially a long-term biological interaction between two independent organisms, which can have three forms as mutualistic, where both organisms benefit from each other. For example, flowers and bees have a mutualistic symbiotic relationship, and the bees collect the nectar from the flower for a beneficial food source, but in the process of collecting the nectar, it also pollinates the flower, so both organisms benefit and neither one is harmed. And the second type is called commensalism and uh, in commensalistic symbiosis one of the organisms benefits but without any positive or negative effect on the second organism an example of that would be barnacles on a whale uh, the barnacles are transported around getting fed and everything but they don't have any effect on the whale at all and it probably doesn't even notice that they're there I probably could have thought of a gardening related one there but yeah anyway finally we've got parasitism which is one that gardeners are most familiar with and that one is where organisms benefit to the detriment of the host and uh, the most common garden parasite aphids are parasitic symbionts with the host plant which suffers gradually becoming weaker as the flies feed on its tasty contents. In the relationship that we're interested in between mycorrhizae and plants the relationship is mutually beneficial because as the plant photosynthesizes it produces sugars and carbohydrates which it then supplies to the fungus through the root system and then in return the fungus supplies the roots with water and a number of minerals and nutrients especially phosphorus. Using mycorrhizal soil conditioning products can be massively beneficial to your soil ecosystem and your plants as a whole. And that's to the extent that you won't need to feed your plants as much anymore because you'll be receiving enhanced nutrition directly from the soil. And the best part is that most plant species are capable of forming mycorrhizal associations. Although, unfortunately, one of the ones that can't is brassicas and uh, that means no broccoli sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower or kale and they're all unaffected by mycorrhizae. But they aren't harmed by them either so there's no real problem with just using the mycorrhizal products in the soil if you're using crop rotation for example. Now I won't go massively into the science of how it all works in this video all the different types of mycorrhizae that exist but I will go into the benefits that can be had from their introduction and as I mentioned earlier the plant benefits from the mycorrhizal mycelium's increased ability to absorb water and nutrients basically because the fungal hyphae which are the fungal equivalent of roots are longer and much finer than roots so the have a much larger surface area and hyphae also absorb mineral nutrients much more efficiently than roots as well. Fungal hyphae also have a knack for making nutrients available to the plant that would have otherwise been locked away, particularly phosphorus, which is an effect that's even more pronounced in heavy clay soil, so that's a super big tip if you have heavy clay soil like me. So this is basically speaking things like rotting wood or organic matter that are down in the soil which have the nutrients locked away, slowly releasing them as they break down. Well, as the fungal mycelium work through the rotting material, they rapidly release and break down those nutrients, supplying them directly to the host plant, bringing in nutrients that the plant had no chance whatsoever of reaching at all. And then the other colonies can form within the root system, particularly nitrogen-fixing bacteria, similar to what you might find in bean plants, that will take nitrogen from the air and then turn them into a form of fixed nitrogen that the plant can also absorb. And there's loads of research into other interactions between mycorrhizae and plants, such as increasing crop sizes and making plants pest resistance as well, which means we can use less fertilizers and less pesticides and just means less of all those nasty things being dumped all over the place. 
if you do plan on getting into using mycorrhizal colonization to boost your plants, it is a good opportunity to also get into really good gardening habits and use the lowest possible amounts of manure and fertilizer that you possibly can because well, you're not only going to save a lot of time and money, but you're also going to help protect the biodiversity and the health of your soil and the wider environment. Self-contained plants like those in pots and grow bags and things like that, there's not much you can really do about those nutrient-wise, so just stick to your normal feeding routine with those. But if it is just natural soil in the ground, give mycorrhizae a go and just get the natural and non-destructive nutrient source for your plants. Here we go, this is what... Whoop. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, here we go, this is the product that I'm going to be using, and uh, this is Orca Liquid Mycorrhizae. And this is a product that you typically use with hydroponics, but you can also use it with soil. And it basically contains... Um, like a selection of different mycorrhizal fungi but also some bacteria as well i think there's uh, four mycorrhizal fungi in there and then there's five different types of beneficial bacteria as well and these will colonize in the soil as we basically as we use it it'll start to colonize pretty much straight away and then with the hopefully get all of these really good benefits from using it uh, and just looking down here at the bottom we've got the um, application methods so as you'll see there we've got the um, amount of water to the amount of orca liquid and that is for hydroponics and cloning and then just at the bottom there we've got it for using in soil and cocoa fiber and then existing plants as well and as I'm using it in soil, I'm just going to use the one mil per gallon, as it says on the label, and I've got a six litre watering can, which is close enough to a gallon. And I'm going to use one of these small syringes just to measure it out. And here we go, here's my watering can. I've just got a normal watering rose on the end, and I've got 1.5 millilitres of orca here. Uh, it says you can use up to three times the amount, and I thought, oh, I'll just stick one and a half in, um, just while I'm putting it in fresh. So I'll just squirt that in there, give it a bit of a rinse out. I like rinsing these out with the water, just to get everything out from inside. Uh, and then oh, I'm, I'm gonna need a stick or something to uh, give it a bit of a mix. Here we go, I've got my stick, give it a good mix. There we go. And now I'm going to struggle to do this one-handed while I also film. Uh, and basically, you're just going to water as normal, just water it everywhere. It doesn't need to be really soaking because there's thousands and thousands of uh, microbial pieces, I suppose is the best way to describe it, in the water. So just give it a good spraying around everywhere. Uh, oh, this is just absolutely rubbish. What's it? Oh, I thought there might be some muck stuck in there. That's not doing it. Uh, maybe it's just rubbish. Stick that back on. Yeah, I don't know what's causing that. Anyway, yeah, just just lash your water over everything, basically. Um, it doesn't matter if it goes on the plants. It'll just wash off next time you water it anyway. Uh, stick it in your pots if you want. I've got some jalapenos. Kiwi can have some. Uh, there we go. You can have some. You can have some. Uh, there you go. You can have some if you like opera. There you go. Some for you. There we are. There we go, grape, you can have some as well. There are. And there we go, I'm just sticking this on everything and uh, you can use it on your tomatoes, your chilies. I mean, particularly those because uh, flowering plants benefit especially well from these. And because you're getting that extra phosphorus unlocked as well, it's really going to help all the fruit that develops. And there we go, just stick it all over everything because it will pretty much work with any plant that you're growing, apart from your brassicas, obviously. But yeah, just give it a go. Well, there we go, that was super easy, and I hope that clears up any questions that you might have had about using mycorrhizal products with your plants. And maybe even if you don't plan to use them, you will at least know what they are and how they work. So do let me know in the comments if you use these products, particularly with tomato and pepper plants, because I'd really like to hear whether you noticed any difference in your plants once you started to use them. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for a new video every Tuesday and Saturday to help you get the most out of your growing space this year, whether it's in your garden, an allotment, a balcony, or even just on a window ledge i'm sure there'll be something there for you let's hope this colony takes off and i get some super boosted fruit production this year i'll see you next time